So the question is, is this a parity problem? Well, it appears to be, right? Because this has to rotate by 90 degrees. I can't have one center rotating by 90 degrees. I can't have that happen on a 3x3, three three. that would never occur, but I can't really have that happen even on a 4x4. Four four. So is this a parity problem because of the fact that I have one center rotation? Uh, or is this a problem with equivocation? which means that it's not a problem of reduction. It is more of a problem of having pieces that are equivalent to each other. My contention is this, and again, this is widely open to discussion, but I don't look at this as a parody. And the reason is this. My hope is that the next morphings to be mass produced is this ultra morphings. This is a five by five version. This is a Trapoon product, handmade. I basically got all the different mega morphings type series, but this is an ultra morphings. But in this situation, this is a five-layer puzzle, which means its parity is the same as a three-layer puzzle. They're both odd-layered puzzles. So because of that, I shouldn't run into any, into any parity problems because these edges guide me. Yet, I'm able to put it into this situation. This situation is very much like this situation over here, uh, which you would never get in this situation here. Now you can see that this center here is lined up perfectly fine. But this all around this, the, these outer portions of the center, these are all rotated off by 90 degrees. So if I can't get into a parity problem with this, because I didn't change the parity of the puzzle, how was I able to get it here? Now you may say, well, it's not exactly an apparent parity problem because you got the center that didn't get rotated. But the fact is, even with the center not rotated, how was I able to get this in this configuration over here? It doesn't make any sense because, because I shouldn't be able to rotate all of this by 90 degrees. These centers should be coming out. In other words, it shouldn't look lined up. All these should be um, not quite lined up as well. So because I'm able to do this, I'm able to get this into a similar configuration. I don't look at this as a parity problem because I can put this in at higher levels of an odd layered puzzle. So here's my point. The way that I was able to do this is by making use of false equivocation and not parity. Now here's my challenge to anybody who owns an Ultramorphings. Get this into this configuration. That's my challenge. But in any case, I'm able to do this, I'm able to cause that rotation because I have translational equivalence between these pieces and the center over here. So this didn't come out because of a parity of reduction. This came out because I was substituting these pieces to here to put it into this configuration one by one by one. Which means this, to me, is not a parity of reduction. So I'm not going to look to see if I have to reduce this in a different way. In other words, how can I reduce the center to make this happen? This is a problem of translational equivalence, where multiple center pieces, say here, here, and here, can be exchanged for each other. They're equivalent. They have translational equivalence. So because of that, I'm able to get it into this configuration. So to get it out of this configuration, what I'm going to do is orchestrate an exchange between two pieces. Once I do that, this apparent parity will be gone. So this is not going to be a problem of re-reduction, so to speak, just a swapping of two pieces. And you can say, well, aren't you just swapping two pieces and reducing centers again? Sure. So that's why it's open to, um, to discussion. But I look at false equivocation and parity problems as different because it guides my solve. When looking at this and scratching my head over this, I'm thinking, well, this didn't emerge because of a parity problem because I can do the same thing here. And when solving this guy, what's really challenging is you end up with situations like this and you're not sure how you got that. But I know that it's not a parity problem. I know that it's just a matter of swapping like um, pieces with each other. And that's what's happening with this. I have to swap pieces like each other. So if you end up in this configuration, what you're going to do is you're going to orchestrate an exchange between, say, the red and any one of these, or the blue and any one of these. You don't have to worry about big, long, fangled algorithms for this. Just do a sliding U technique to do that. So what's going to happen is if I were to orchestrate an exchange, um, let's say I put it up here, this will go to here. Well, we're going to want to do it like this. This will go down to here. Let's see if we can actually organize this here. 
And I'm going to try to line this up to where this can be brought down to here. Okay, so this will go down to here. This will come up to here, and this will come up to here. This center will not be changed at all, but these will be swapped. And forget about the confirmation that that's going to cause with this. You're going to take out um, the uh, parity issues. Alternatively, if you don't want to move this around, let's move it down to here. This will come here, this will come here, and this will come here. Not affecting this at all. So you can keep it in this configuration. So a sliding U technique is we're going to bring this down. Slide this down to here. We slid it down from the right. Uh, from the left, rather. Move it to the right portion. Slide it down on the right. Then I'm going to take my F, slide it back here so that it's lined up to the left. Bring it up on the left. Slide it back down to the right. And then bring it up on the right. And I simply slide this back. No changes here, but I caused this to apparently swap. It didn't really swap, right? I just did a three cycle. But this three cycle, because these are equ equivalent, looks like a swap. So now what do I do? Well, the next thing I do is I'm simply going to swap these two the way that I did at the beginning. I'm going to put back the problem that I caused when I initially reduced it. Um, but rather than fix it then by putting the corners in, um, before, I put the, before I reduce the edges, I'm just going to handle it here. So I'm going to hold it like this and do a corner swap like that. Through the middle to our U to our UI to our UI D to our UI to our U and to our this moves back. Don't panic, you won't destroy any of these. And now we have this configuration. To which you might say, oh, we destroyed everything that we put in, but don't worry, we didn't really. We just reconfigured it. I'm simply going to put my corners back in. You can see I did not change my corners. My corners are still oriented correctly, permuted correctly. They're all fine. And then what we're going to do now is, again, we're not going to worry about this. We've taken the false equivocation out. We're going to do our edge swapping the same way that we did before. So what we want to do is we've got these two, but these two need to be swapped, right? They're both at the red side, so we have to swap that. Again, don't orient it with the center. That's going to come later. So hold it here and do an adjacent edge swap to our U, to our U, to our to U, to our to U, to our U, to our UI, to our. We like this. We created some misplacement here, but that's okay. We're simply going to do an edge swap over here. To our U, to our U, to our to U, to our to U, to our U, to our UI, to our. That fixes this. Move this back over here. So now all these are fixed. Center is still rotated. But that's okay, because this is rotated 180 degrees. We could not do a single rotation of a center 90 degrees. We could only do a 90 degree rotation in one center and a 90 degree rotation in another center. But you can do a 180 degree uh, rotation of another center. So basically, you don't have to memorize big bad algorithms. Nothing new, you just have to get your strategy. The algorithm to flip the center here, and this is a classic thing that can be done in any supercube. I'll just show it over here is you do R U R I U R U R I U R U R I U R U R I U R U R I U Just keep doing that over and over again until this thing is rotated by 180 degrees and that's all we have to do here. Hold it here R U R I U R U R I U R U R I U R U R I U R U R I U. Now I don't keep count, but I think it was five times. So that puts this in, and it's done. Um, what I really enjoy about the um, uh, Megamorphinks is the uh, fact that it utilizes all the issues in the simple design of true parity of reduction 
and false equivocation, uh, where you can have a translational equivocation between the centers. But I think that basically walks through much of the challenges of this puzzle. And having done all these types of puzzles in the past, I'm kind of utilizing some of the experience that I, that I have with that. But if there's any further questions about this kind of a puzzle, or you have specific configurations that you have questions on, let me know. If you have any need or want to see solves of any of these guys, I think I did this one, or perhaps this guy over here, I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, my challenge is how did you get into this puzzle to those that have an ultramorphinx? And just for good measure, if you've really got a hankering for morphinx puzzles and really would like to see the extreme of that, maybe it's about time I pulled out this beast over here, the nanophobic, the largest of its kind. And if so wanting, if you'd like to see something of a solve of this guy, a nine layer version that bears in mind all of the potential issues that can happen with this, let me know and we'll see if we can bring this guy out here. Anyway, thanks for watching.